Hey guys, I got a request from my wife. I'm gonna be replacing this thing. What it is is one of my old inventions to uh, stage clothing before it goes into the closet. But it is too close to the closet, so it makes it inconvenient to get there once the clothes are on the rack. So I'm gonna be moving it down. I'm gonna make it swing out from the wall instead of up and down. And I got a couple other creative things that I wanna to add to it. Let's go down to the shop and see what I can do. So I took this off the wall so we can work with it in the design phase here. What I could do is I could actually just attach this to the wall with a couple of hinges and let it swing out from the wall and done. That's boring. So we're going to come up with something new. A few things I need to keep in mind is that it needs to be clean because clean laundry is going to hang on it. And it needs to have some sort of support. This arm that locks in place is not going to be there in the final version. I am going to try to incorporate it up top so that it locks in place when it swings out from the wall. There will be a brace here so that it's still supported, but that's going to be fixed in place. Outside of that, I don't know what I'm doing yet. So I'm going to take some time to think about it. I think I came up with an idea that will work. I don't know how this is going to turn out, but it's going to revolve around the canvas. I'm going to paint a picture first. So my centerpiece is done here, and I believe I've come up with a frame idea that's going to work. It's going to allow me to remove the painting and put a new one in, and it's also going to have the arm to hang laundry on. And this way we don't just have an arm hanging out on the wall, we have a picture to look at when it's not in use. To give you an idea of my plan here, there's going to be a backer piece. On the backer, there will be three sides underneath that are attached to each other. The top part will be about half the size so that I can utilize this metal arm to keep the swing arm in place when it's being used. The right side will be removable along with the piece that's going to be on top of it. The top piece is going to provide the lip to keep the painting in place. These two underside pieces will be tapered The bottom piece will also be fixed in place and will also have a lip on it. The swing arm will also overlap, but it won't necessarily be to keep the painting in place. That will be the taper underneath. And on all four corners, there will be an angle piece attached in strategic places to provide support for the arm as well as make it just look pretty overall. You'll get the idea as I work, or you'll be lost until the end.
here at the router now. I'm going to put the uh, taper on the edge here. This is a half inch dovetail router bit. I'm just going to go along the edge, put the slant on there so it keeps the painting against the wall when the arm is opened up. Okay, just to recap of what's going on, these three pieces will be put together and fastened against the uh, backer. This one will be attached with some keyhole slots. You'll be able to lift it and take it off. Painting will be able to slide in. I think we're doing all right. All right, these three pieces are gonna be attached right to the backer board, but first I'm gonna put these together with some pocket holes. Before I attach this top piece, I'm going to make sure it fits. It's a little tighter than I'd like. And it appears that either the canvas or the frame is not as square as I'd like. Because it's so tight, I'm going to cut a couple of finger holes in this side to make sure that I can remove the painting. And I was not taking into account the painting not being square. Considering it's not exactly square, I'm just going to put this in the frame and clamp it so that we get as close as possible. I can also bring the swing arm out over this area a little bit more to give it the illusion that there's no gaps. Since it's clamped in place, I can take this out. I would much rather miss the board and drill through the background over missing the board and driving a screw through my painting. And now like I said I'm going to put some finger slots in here so it's easier to remove the painting. Some might say you need a blade to cut, but I say if you don't have a blade, you can't screw it up. Don't seem to be getting anywhere this way. Next thing is going to be the keyholes, and they're going to be a little tricky because they have to be exact. I'm going to mark the spot on the board here to show where exactly I have to be between. So there's going to be a screw at the top and the bottom. 
small end has to be at the top. And the hole itself should be at the bottom and they need to be the same length. So I'm going to go set up the router for that. Cross your fingers. Okay, I've set the bit to the right height. I've wrapped my lines around here so I can see them. And now I just need to make sure that I make these holes the same length so that they fit right. This tape is going on here so I can see my marks that I'm leaving. So I only need this to be about three quarters of an inch. So when I plunge down, I'm going to mark the tape and then I'm going to move the wood in that direction until it gets to the other mark. The next step is to put the outside frame on. I'm going to have about a quarter inch overlap so you don't see the gaps between the painting and the frame like we saw on our test fit. Somehow I cut this one too long, so let's fix that now before I glue it in place. I don't really want to mark this because you'll be able to see the pencil lines anywhere you put them. I'm going to put the glue on it. And then I'm going to line it up down here and use the uh, little ruler to make sure it's lined up at the other side. Okay, glue has had time to set. Now it's time for the next fun experience here. To attach the arm to the swinging piece, I'm gonna use the pocket holes again. The only real difference in this set of pocket holes compared to the last set is that I'm going to fill these with a couple of plugs so you don't see them. Parchment papers just so I don't get any glue on the table saw. Not like it would be the first time. Okay, we're lined up. Now I could put the hinges on next, but I think it's going to be easier to put the support braces on first. I have every bit of confidence that between the oak, the screws, and the glue, this would hold by itself. But depending on what's being hung here, it's a lot of leverage that could work against it. All 
All right, let's strategically glue this thing up. This one is the easy one. Both sides get attached. Okay, hinge time. I found these. This was not their intended purpose. They were used on something else and removed, but I'm going to use them here. Now, if I would just install these as is, I'd lift the board up and I'd have a gap here. So, I'm going to chisel out a notch for these hinges to go into. Now, I also, after comparing these hinges to about everything else in the shop, found out that they're about the same depth as a 3 16th inch piece of plywood here. So, I'm going to use this as a depth gauge. I'm going to start off by using a router to get most of it routed out, and then I'll use a chisel to clean it up. I'm going to take the hinge itself, and there's that little gap right here. That's what I'm going to line the edge of the wood up with. When I'm confident it's in place, I'll trace around, and that's where I'm going to chisel out. So this is the hardest part for me with hinges, trying to get them to line up right. I had an idea come to mind to use double-sided tape. So that's what I'm going to try here. Maybe I'll get them to line up first time. Well, the double-sided tape stuck a little bit better than I expected. But I have my holes. Doesn't appear to be leaving much for residue behind, however, I am gonna hit it quick with some sandpaper just to make sure. I'll clean up the hinges in a bit. Not a perfect fit, but I can tell where the other screws need to go by with where this is laying. Okay, so I'm going to take these out, clean up the hinges, and put them all back in, and hope it lines up. I'm pretty sure the high-speed rendition of that is going to look a lot easier than it was. Those little screws don't like going into oak, and if you use a drill to put them in, you're going to twist the heads off. Now that I got the hinges on and I know they're working, I'm going to fill these plugs in. This would have been easier to do before it was attached, but I wanted to make sure that the hinges were going to work before I did this. Okay, glue should have set. Now I'll trim them up. I'm going to use this multi-tool first to cut it down, 
And then if need be, I'll use a chisel to get it even closer. And then to finish it, I'll use, a sand, use some sandpaper. And then it'll be time to install the arm. Okay, the first coat of polyurethane is done drying. Uh, we're going to put another coat on here, but before we do that, I realized that there's one thing that this one does not have that the original did, and that's a way to keep the clothes hanger from falling off the end. See, the original here, if you put a clothes hanger on and it slid to the side, it would get stopped by that peg. It doesn't need to be on both sides, it just needs to be on one side, so I'm going to put a peg on the inside of the arm. So I set this drill bit up with a stopper on it so it doesn't go too far and poke through the outside of the frame. First I'm going to tap a little hole so I don't go off course. And if my measurements are correct here, I should be able to tap a regular size peg in here and it should have enough room to clear at the back side. Closes tight with enough clearance. So I'm going to put the last coat of polyurethane on this and then I'll meet you upstairs to install it on the wall. So here it is, all set up. Swing arm comes out. You can stage laundry on there. This side comes off. Painting can slide out and be replaced. And it all goes back to a picture frame. So I thought this was a pretty unique project. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Um, and if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. I'll see you in the next project.